Good morning, I'm Natalie Hadley with your KQNK News. Brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, serving all of your chemical and fertilizer needs. House lawmakers advanced a traffic bill that would ban minors under 18 from using a cell phone while driving and ban all Kansas drivers from using cell phones in school zones when reduced speed warnings are in effect or while driving in construction zones. The bill gained initial approval on the House floor, with final action on the bill expected soon. Law enforcement would be authorized to issue warnings until July 1st of 2025 and then issue $60 fines after that date. Exceptions are allowed for law enforcement or emergency personnel while on the job, a motorist stopped in a safe spot, or a person using a hands-free device or a device permanently affixed to the vehicle. Motorists who use a cell phone to report illegal activity, prevent imminent injury to a person or damage to property, make a call for emergency medical assistance, or relay information to a transit dispatcher would also be exempt. Another provision requires drivers approaching a stopped vehicle using caution signals or other hazards warnings to change lanes if possible and to proceed with caution. And those violations would carry a $75 fine. House lawmakers also advanced a bill to change the state's longstanding civil asset forfeiture practice, one widely c- characterized as in dire need of reform. Civil asset forfeiture allows law enforcement agencies to seize cash and property they suspect was used in a crime. In Kansas, where police can take property they believe to be connected to crime before the property owner is charged or convicted, Close to $25.3 million in cash and property has been seized by Kansas law enforcement agencies over the past three and a half years. Senate Bill 458 would remove the crime of drug possession from the list of offenses subject to forfeiture, shorten the window of time for property to be returned to the owner, require a judge to approve a probable cause affidavit before a forfeiture case could be could proceed and allow defendants who recovered more than half of their property to recoup attorney's fees and litigation costs. Final House action on this bill is expected to occur in the next few days and it will then go to the governor. The Kansas Corporation Commission wants to remind utility customers that there are two important dates coming up that they should be aware of. First, the deadline to apply for the Low Income Energy Assistance Program, known as LEAP, is this Friday, March 29th. LEAP is a federally funded program administered by the Kansas Department of Children and Families. LEAP applications must be received by the Kansas Department for Children and Families office by 5 p.m. on Friday. And the KCC urges all customers facing financial difficulties to act now to stay connected. More information about the program is available at dcf.ks.gov. In addition, the cold weather rule will end this Sunday, March 31st. The cold weather rule protects residential customers served by the Kansas Corporation Commission regulated utilities from disconnection when the temperatures are forecast to drop below 35 degrees. When the cold weather rule is in effect, regulated utilities are also required to offer a 12-month payment plan upon request, even if a previous payment plan had been broken. When that protection ends this Sunday, failure to make arrangements or failure to adhere to an already established payment plan could result in disconnection. And reconnection after March 31st may require past due balances be paid in full, depending on the utility's policy. It is important to note that the Kansas Corporation Commission does not regulate co-ops or municipal utilities, although many of those utilities also offer a cold weather payment plan. For a complete list of utilities regulated by the KCC and for utility assistance program information, you can visit their website at kcc.ks.gov. And to find out more about utility assistance programs in your area, you can contact your your utility or the Kansas Corporation Commission Consumer Protection Office at 800-662-0027. Medicare Advantage open enrollment period started on January 1st and will run through this Sunday, March 31st. And during this time, if you're in a Medicare Advantage plan and want to change your health plan, you can switch to a different Medicare Advantage plan with or without drug coverage or go back to original Medicare and, if needed, also join a Medicare prescription drug plan. Some changes to be aware of for 2024 includes that 21 Medicare prescription drug plans will be available with premiums varying from $0.50 to $106.70. 
77.81% of people with standalone Medicare prescription drug plans have access to a plan with a lower premium than what they paid in 2023. 92 Medicare Advantage plans are available in 2024 compared to 90 plans in 2023. 100% of people with Medicare have access to a Medicare Advantage plan, and the average monthly Medicare Advantage plan premium change from $7.42 in 2023 to $9.90 in 2024, representing a $2.48 change in average premium. There will be expanded eligibility for full benefits under the Extra Help program, meaning all Extra Help enrollees will pay no deductible, no premium, and benefit from fixed lower co-payments for certain medications. To learn more about the Extra Help program, including eligibility criteria and how to apply, you can visit cms.gov. In Nebraska news, the Nebraska State Patrol reported that a New Jersey man was caught Saturday with several pounds of cocaine near York. According to the patrol, at around 12.15 p.m., a trooper pulled over a vehicle for speeding on Interstate 80, just east of York, and the trooper became suspicious of criminal activity, so they searched the vehicle. Authorities found 20 pounds of cocaine hidden in several compartments in the vehicle, and the driver, 40-year-old Pablo Surrey Hernandez, was arrested on suspicion of two felony drug charges. The Lancaster County Sheriff's Office is investigating an early Sunday morning theft at Rod's Power Sports. Chief Deputy Ben Houchin said authorities were called to the store near Highway 77 and South Taylor Road at around 5 a.m., and when the deputies arrived, they found that the showroom window was shattered and that six Honda motorcycles worth around $48,000 were missing. During the investigation, deputies learned that a vehicle had backed into the window and the window had $200,000 in damage. The store owner, Rod Yanagita, said once inside they did a quite a bit of damage to the building, destroyed two motorcycles and scratched three or four ATVs. The damage to those motorcycles and all-terrain vehicles was listed at about $12,000. According to video shared by Rod's Power Sports on Facebook, two people got out and loaded the motorcycles into a U-Haul truck, and Houchin thinks this burglary is related to one in St. Joseph, Missouri, saying it certainly wasn't their first time doing it. Anyone with information is asked to call the Sheriff's Office or Crime Stoppers at 402-475-3600. I'll be back with more in just a moment. Firebolt Ag is a full-service fertilizer and chemical retailer. They customize products for individual farmers' needs, with the primary focus being customer profitability. Let Josh and Jack help you get the most out of your farm ground. They also provide in-house marketing with Ron Wall of Flatwater Solutions. Visit Ron in Phillipsburg or call Josh at 785-854-8484 or Jack at 308-840-2819. Firebolt Ag, your leader in agriculture. The Kansas Department of Transportation has started a field survey activity for a proposed bridge replacement project on K-383 in Norton County. The crews are surveying the bridge over the Prairie Dog Creek, located approximately five miles southwest of the West U.S. 36 junction, and the activities will include the use of survey instruments on the ground to determine locations of existing features within the survey corridor. The Kansas Department of Transportation expects this work to be completed in April, conditions permitting. A member of the survey crew will contact property owners or tenants for permission to enter private property if access is needed. And for more information, you can contact the Kansas Department of Transportation Public Affairs Manager, Lisa Moosman, at 785-874-8107. According to the unofficial minutes of the Norton County Board of Commissioners meeting that was held on Monday, March 18th, Commissioner Garrett Beidler called the meeting of the Norton County Board of Commissioners to order at 9 a.m. in the commission room, and in attendance were Richard Thompson, Garrett Beidler, and Marvin Matchett. Lauren Lewis, the K-Camp Claims representative, was in to review policy and changes with the commission, and a general review of the county's policy and benefits were provided. Some of the risk management services available include attorney assist, jail guidelines, law enforcement model policies, online university, a risk avoidance grant, roads to scholar program, and live consultation with senior level human resource professionals. Lauren also discussed returning to Norton and providing a defensive driving course for county employees. Terry Laughlin and Todd Ellers spoke with the commission on several topics. 
A discussion was held on the upcoming bid process and specs for a new motor grader, and there were several points made on the pros and cons of JD or CAT. Both Foley and JD will present bids to the county commission in the near future from specifications that have been requested from the county. And at this time, each firm is also reviewing grader number 106 for trade-in value. A discussion was also held on the motor grader blades and their inability to hold up. Terry stated that in some situations, the blades only last three days and are much too soft of a metal. Other options are being looked into. Employment and recruitment was discussed with possible options. Terry stated that they had been speaking about attending job fairs and offering some type of scholarship to individuals who attend trade schools with the intent of returning to Norton for employment with the county. Equipment usage and tinting of windows was then discussed. For the motor graders and after discussion, the commission agreed that tinting was not necessary and the use of equipment would be Terry's decision with the commission backing his decisions. Mid-month checks were presented to the commission for signature and approval and check numbers 2130, 2131 and 2132 were approved as submitted in the amount of $255.18. Tax abatement 2024-36 was presented for signature and approval. The abatement was issued for property that was for agricultural use and exempt. The abatement was approved and signed. A motion was made by Commissioner Thompson to approve the March 11th minutes with the second from Chairman Beidler, and the motion passed. The commission spoke briefly with Jordan Detmer with PENCO Engineering about a proposed two-inch overlay on parts of Eagles Club Road. The overlay will be applied by the Kansas Department of Transportation and will start on the curve off of U.S. 36 and go southwest as far as the material will go. It's uncertain at this time how much of the road will be overlaid. The meeting was then adjourned until March 25th. Funeral services for Alberta Guile, 87 of Almina, will be held at 2 p.m. on Thursday, March 28th at the Norton Christian Church and burial will follow in the Mount Hope Cemetery in Almina. Memorial contributions may be made to the Norton Christian Church and sent in care of Plummer Gobber Funeral Home, 215 West Main Street in Norton. And condolences may be left for the family at plummergobber.com. Your menu today for Eisenhower Elementary School. For lunch, you'll be having pizza square, toss salad, pears, green beans, and milk. For Norton Community High School and Junior High, your lunch today will be corn dog, fruit, and milk. And for Northern Valley Schools, your lunch today will be hamburger, bun, potatoes, vegetable, and fruit. I'm Natalie Hadley. Your KQNK News was brought to you by Firebolt Ag, LLC, farmers helping farmers to succeed. You can contact Firebolt Ag today to get the most out of your farmland. Your KQNK weather forecast is being brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, your Norton experts for all of your pest control needs. Your forecast for today, it should be sunny with a high near 32 and a northwest wind of 10 to 15 miles per hour. For tonight, there'll be increasing clouds with a low around 14 and a calm wind becoming south around 5 miles per hour in the evening. On Wednesday, it should be mostly sunny with a high near 46 and a south wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour. And on Wednesday night, it should be mostly clear with the low around 27 and a southwest wind around 10 miles per hour. I'll be back with the rest of your forecast in just a moment. When you've got dogs, we know what a nuisance that can be. Lock them out. From Hinkle Termite and Pest Control, Lock Em Out is our very effective residential insect prevention program. We'll come to your place and treat your foundation plus all insect entryways. And while we're there, receive a free termite inspection. Call Mr. Rich Wenzel, our certified technician in Norton at 785-202-0167. That's 202-0167. Continuing with your weather forecast, on Thursday it should be sunny with a high near 62 on Friday, sunny with the high near 65. On Saturday, mostly sunny with the high near 62. On Sunday, mostly sunny with the high near 68. And on Monday, there's a 20% chance of showers. Otherwise, it'll be partly sunny with the high near 58 and breezy. Currently, with fair skies, it is 18 degrees. The humidity is 68%. The wind speed is north at 15 miles per hour. 
The barometric pressure is 29.87. The dew point is 9 degrees. And the current wind chill is 4 degrees. Your weather was brought to you by Hinkle Termite and Pest Control right here in Norton. You can call Hinkle Termite and Pest Control at 785-202-0167 for all of your pest control needs. It is 823.